a show where we inform, empower, and inspire our businesses, communities, and people just like you. So whether you're starting a new business, expanding your existing business, or whether you just want to help communities thrive, we've got something for you. Today on the show, oh, this is going to be really good. We're talking about healthy vegan cooking. Not just healthy, it tastes good too. <laughs> and we have the perfect guest on the show today talking to us about that, Dr. Carlina Jackie Jackson Burden, who's the founder of Beyond Vegan Corporation. Let me tell you a little bit about Jackie. She holds a PhD in human services with specialization in counseling from Compella University, a master's of arts in community agency counseling, and a bachelor's of arts in general studies with emphasis in psychology, both from Hampton University. She's the founder of Beyond Vegan Cell Food, research-based food development brand that provides whole food healthier options to support our immune system and overall health. Prior to establishing Beyond Vegan Cell Food, she was the executive director of a nonprofit for over 19 years that helped to educate, uh, empower youth and also young women. She says we should be eating to live instead of living to eat. And I just love that. So help me welcome to the show. Dr. Jackie, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I am so glad that we have you on the show today because you have a wealth of knowledge about food and also how our bodies respond to food. Yes. So, so tell me a little bit about why you decided to start. I mean, here you are, you're running this nonprofit agency as an executive director for 19 years. You probably could have stayed there, but you decided you want to start a business and you wanted to start this Beyond Vegan Corporation. Why, why then? Well, because I was seeing a lot of things. Um, I was working with young people and I was seeing a lot of allergies, uh, a lot of mm -hmm. issues with young people. These are young people, not that grown 18 year old. And I was seeing a lot of things happening. But what really hit me um, as I got older mm -hmm. and I start to look at my mom mm -hmm. and my mom uh, was diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. And I start to have little symptoms, you know. The aches and the, the pains. The aches, the pains, mm -hmm. of having problems walking up steps mm -hmm. and um, problems with my hands. And I was like, is this my plight? You know, is mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen with me? Then my sister uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, wow. Then I had another sister uh, who had to have two um, knee replacement. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at all of this stuff, and I'm, and I'm the youngest. Um, and I'm saying, is this my life? Is this wow. what is going to happen? with me mm -hmm. and I start to research and to understand why this is happening and I remember when I was in uh, my studying for my doctoral program I took this course um, it was called human development mm -hmm. and on the doctoral level so mm -hmm. it kind of touched on a lot of things mm -hmm. and it made me feel like wow when I turn 50 it's gonna go downhill from there <laughs> you know <laughs> And that, you know, wasn't the case as I found out now. Mm -hmm. And so I start to research. I use that research uh, that I was uh, teaching at the time. Mm -hmm. I was teaching at Capella University. Mm -hmm. I was teaching in the doctoral program. Mm -hmm. I was teaching other um, researchers through the mm -hmm. dis dissertation process. And I start to use that um, database and start to look mm -hmm. at eating food and how it relates and I came across Dr. Savy, mm -hmm. and I came across his work and this whole um, 
Bio so Dr. Sebi is it's an African biomineral balance. He has that mythology. Yes. Oh, okay. And that was that that uh, method that I start to look at. Yeah. And I, a lot of other things was happening. I was pre-diabetic. I was having so many issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I found Dr. Sabi, and me being the researcher that I am, uh, I looked at his nutritional guide. And when I looked at the nutritional guide, I looked at all the ingredients. I started to follow uh, different um, Facebook, uh, Facebook mm -hmm. groups that was following Dr. Sabi at the time. And they were complaining, oh, the, the, the list is so limited. And I said, well, let me see. So right. I became an experimental <laughs> you know, person. The and curiosity I to, in yeah, here. <laughs> and I started to experiment on myself. And I took that list for 21 days. And I did everything that um, Dr. Savy has said in some videos and mm -hmm. whatever. And I did it. And I started to feel so great. Oh, wow. And wonderful. And the first thing that left was my knee. The eggs and pain. <laughs> the because all of that is just inflammation, right? Yes, it was all about that. And that's what the whole Africa bio mineral balance was really about. It was wow. helping us to appreciate that we were taking in a whole lot of starchy food mm. that actually was causing the body to become filled with, uh, with mucus and inflammation mm -hmm. uh, in the body. And that was storing, you know, things up. And there is where the diseases and the illness and whatever is going to grow wow. it's a it's a bed it was a garden for them a fertilizer <laughs> that's a really good point so you say there's least detrimental food mm -hmm. so what exactly does that mean when you say that well well you know when we think about least detrimental food we'll mm -hmm. think about something that is going to affect our body in the least amount mm -hmm. okay uh, I talk with people all the time about, you know, the fact of what food's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand food. Mm -hmm. And food is fuel. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to help replenish mm -hmm. the, uh, the body. So now, when you talk about food that is detrimental to us, you put it in your body and you get sleepy instead of energized. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then we know that that food probably it's not right if it doesn't give us energy right. it's defeating the purpose it's defeating the purpose yeah. just think about every time you go to the yeah. and fill up your car with gas and what happens instead of it moving it dies <laughs> so <we laughs> that's, have, a good point. that's a great analogy there <laughs> so you know we have to look at our bodies you know in that same um wow. that same fashion in right. the same way that you know the body is designed to the food is designed to energize the body. So when I say least detrimental food, then I try to get food that has a glycemic index that is low. So it doesn't now, tell the um, viewers what you mean by glycemic index. Well, that is the way that the body food raises the sugar level mm -hmm. uh, and the insulin level in the body. Right. And so um, I try to get food that is you know, mm -hmm. low in the in that uh, index. Mm -hmm. So that way it's diabetic friendly wow. because we were running into a lot of people that was diabetic. Mm -hmm. And it's plenty of food out there for everyone else. But, you know, I want to concentrate on the people who are overlooked, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to create food that was friendly uh, for, diabet uh, for people with diabetics. Then with Dr. Sabin list, his list was talking about a lot of starch mm -hmm. that was causing the, the inflammation in the body. So uh, looking at uh, a food that was less uh, acidic uh, right. to the body, mm -hmm. because what does starch do? You know, it's going to get into the body and it's going to turn to sugar. So mm -hmm. you still, you know, may as well go out there and just eat that piece of cake. So. <laughs> You know, all of that stuff, you know, that Dr. Savy um, was talking about, you know, less um, white flour, mm -hmm. you know, white sugar, the white rice, and, and all of these things that have, have a very high starch content. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll stay away from those foods. So when you're moving to food that is more uh, closer to nature, Mm -hmm. You know, your fruits and your vegetables mm -hmm. with things not added, like all the preservatives mm -hmm. and the additives, then those food are going to be less detrimental to the body. Got it. Wow. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. We're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back. 
Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita. And I'm here today talking to Dr. Jackie and we are talking about healthy vegan cooking. Not just healthy, it tastes good as well. <laughs> so that's really important. So I wanted to ask you, Dr. Jackie, you grew up on a farm in North Carolina, my home state. And so that, that sort of plays into your connection to food. What was it about that experience that really... Everything. You know, um, I lived on a farm with my grandparents. My mom lived there too. Mm -hmm. And cousin, uh, people didn't uh, or don't believe or you know, didn't realize that when I grew up uh, in the 60s and 70s, and I don't mind telling my age, I'm 61. I, I don't mind. Like <laughs> Not at all. I, I don't <laughs> mind, you know, uh, telling my age uh, at all. But during that time growing up, my grandparents uh, had a farm, and it was a hog farm or all things. So I grew up, you guys, all thing pork, everything, mm -hmm. fat, grease, pork <laughs> and the only uh, other meat it was chicken they also raised chickens mm -hmm. as, as well so you know i didn't know a whole lot you know about beef and the steak and all of that that was a luxury but the the hog and all the pork i could ever imagine and the chicken we we had but my grandparents did everything uh with the hog not one piece of the hog was wasted, none of it. Um, we did the barbecue, they had a barbecue pit that they had under the barn. Right. We had a smokehouse that we smoked it. We had this big uh, iron pot that my grandma will actually clean the chitlins mm -hmm. and then cook the chitlins in the big pot. Uh, we had um, uh, the big pot also was used to uh, cook like the cracklings and oh, i don't yeah. know whether people remember the cracklings that they used to cook. from north carolina you, from north carolina, know, all you know all about this about. stuff absolutely <laughs> so you know think about how unhealthy this was though right we had we made from the whole fat she created the the lord the lord yeah and so we took that lord and we messed up the chicken because we fried the chicken mm -hmm. in the lord <laughs> So just think about all of this stuff that's going on, you know, uh, in our in our bodies, um, and uh, they did that. And so when everything else was done and mm -hmm. it was nothing left but the slimy fat, guess what my grandparents did? They sat there then and they made box last soap. Yes, the soap. Okay. out of you know out of hog fat. Okay. So now I took that same concept of my business and took mushrooms. And I took these mushrooms, and I also used jackfruit, but primarily mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And I create, replicate that taste, that food that my grandparents did wow. without wasting any of the mushrooms. Oh, that's an awesome story. <laughs> oh, that's, that's beautiful. And so I replaced the, the, the pork, um, uh, the grease and the fat and all right. of that healthier stuff. Choices. With healthier choice that was uh -huh. less detrimental to my body. So now let's talk about protein because I, one of my cousins, he, he's a, he's been a vegan since he was 20 some years old. He's 60 some now. But earlier on in the years, it was hard to get enough protein in that. But but tell us about that now. You know, this whole protein movement. <laughs> It's almost like uh, people uh, saying, you know, um, uh, you know, you're not getting the protein, but then they're looking at what you're getting the protein from. Uh, a cow is a vegetarian. They eat no meat, but look at them. Look at the strength. same thing like a gorilla. You know, it's the amazing. Gorilla, Gorillas don't eat any meat. They treat the bark and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, the yeah. elephant mm -hmm. and and all. But protein is everywhere in nature, mm -hmm. you know. So if you're eating from nature, then you're getting your protein. So.
So you're getting your protein. Mushrooms is full of protein. Mm -hmm. So with with me, I take the mushrooms. You got the beans. Um, you have uh, the wild rice because mm -hmm. I don't use a white rice, but round uh, wild rice, uh, which is really not a rice. Uh, we call it a rice because it acts like a rice. It mm -hmm. cooks like a rice, and you can do the same thing that you can do with rice, but it's actually a aquatic grass mm -hmm. that is actually coming from nature. So all of these things have protein mm -hmm. in them. So you can get enough protein from nature. Mm. But th that's the whole thing about the whole vegan, the, the veganism movement that people are on the bandwagon of veganism without really understanding what veganism is. Because veganism is really just about animal rights. Mm -hmm. We, it's just a byproduct, a bad benefit that by us not abstaining uh, uh, from um, um, dairies and staining right. from meat, then we get some benefits uh, uh, from that. Uh, but that's not really what it's about. We really need to be thinking beyond veganism and really actually be that's thinking the name, about beyond that's, vegan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually thinking about our health and mm -hmm. how it benefits. Because first, if we can't uh, be healthy and love us, we're, we're, it's going to be hard for us to love, you know, the animals, the environment, and, and and all the other things. We really need to take care of ourselves by understanding that we're part of nature. Nature is a part of us, and the Creator gave us everything that we needed. Mm -hmm. We're, it's, all connected. It's, it's all, all connected. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times it's a good marketing thing. Mm -hmm. So when we think about, oh, get more protein, get more of this, get, it's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all right there in nature. So <laughs> now I, I've, I've had some of the food, which is absolutely <laughs> delicious, I tell you. And I never knew you could do so much with mushrooms. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for <laughs> mushrooms. Oh my God, talk about that. But you know what? A lot of people, uh, when, they, when you say mushroom, they say, I don't like mushrooms because they are identifying with that mushroom that they see. A very small um, selection of mushroom you see, the portobello, the white bottle mushrooms, mm -hmm. and the baby portobello. Normally, in any um, market you go to, that's what you see. Right, right. But there are thousands of species of mushrooms that are edible. You know, all type of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And I don't use the portobello uh, as much. Uh, they are ground up in my, in my burgers. And the reason, because you can get those, you know, and this mm -hmm. is what people are used to. I try to bring, you know, exotic mushrooms in. Mm -hmm. You know, your oyster mushrooms, now that you can get, go to any international market, uh, Whole Food, uh, Wagmans, and any of those places and pick up these mushrooms. You know, I do a lot of the King Trump mushrooms. You know, so I'm trying to work with, you know, uh, mushrooms that people are not familiar with mm -hmm. because there is a mushroom, like I said, nothing new under the sun. There is a mushroom that can imitate just about or replicate just about any meat out there. We just got to open our minds. <laughs> and, you know, it's similar to this jackfruit. I mean, I yes. never knew that you could do so much with that jackfruit. You can do so much with the jackfruits. And the key to jackfruit is, I like to tell people, is to make sure that you uh, get jackfruit that is green. A lot of times, you know, when you get the real ripe uh, mm -hmm. jackfruit, um, it's a little difficult because it's so sweet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and you can't do a lot with it. But if you go to the international market and a lot of times in the frozen section and even in the cans, you can get the green um, jackfruit and you can do a lot with it. I use jackfruit to cook. Uh, I make um, uh, fish bites. Uh, I have Wasn't it chicken salad? Is and that the chicken, chicken jack salad? It's, oh it's jackfruit. It's the best chicken salad. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one hundred. Tastes just like chicken. <laughs> it's, it's chicken, the tuna, and uh, my barbecue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a North Carolina uh, style barbecue with the vinegar that I took my grandparents' secret uh, recipe and I veganized it and took out the white sugar 
and I created this uh, this sauce and I put it on with the jackfruit and I smoke it with some hickory smoked wood chips. Uh, and you, a lot of people come in and they said, I thought I was eating meat. No, you're eating jackfruit. <laughs> Amazing. We're gonna take a short break on that note. We're gonna take a short break and we're gonna be right back. You've been watching For the Common Good with Juanita, and I've been talking to Dr. Jackie about Beyond Vegan. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good with Juanita and I'm talking to Dr. Jackie today and she's been sharing oh, really good information about vegan cooking and healthy, healthy choices. So I wanted to ask you Dr. Jackie, what do you mean by dense food? What exactly does that mean? Nutrient dense food. Okay, when we talk about nutrient dense food, then we're talking about food that you don't need a whole lot of to do what it's supposed to do. It fills you up It too, fills you it? up faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and it fills you up longer mm -hmm. lasting. Because, you know, when we think about food, and we talked about that earlier, it's fuel. Mm -hmm. And what your body needs is to be replenished. Mm -hmm. A lot of us uh, sometimes get what is food and when we are hungry and need food and when we empty, mix, mixed up. When, we, when we're hungry, your energy level goes down and so you need food because you need to replenish, you know, uh, your cells because they are depleted. Right. But when you're empty, it just means that then the body is at uh, a resting uh, place from the digestive system. Then your body can do what it needs to do to work in repairing and heal itself. Okay, so hungry and empty it's two, it's two different things. Empty is good. We should be empty. We shouldn't use our body as a store uh, as a storehouse. And that's what happens with a lot of the foods we eat. It stays in our body for long Some, periods of time. It takes a lot to digest those, exactly. those meats, especially red meat. Exactly. Mm. And so when you when we talk about high uh, nutrient dense food, mm -hmm. then the nutrients has not been processed out of it. Mm. When you talk about food that has been processed. Mm. You're getting very, very small amount of nutrients that the body needs mm -hmm. and probably a whole lot of preservatives and additives mm -hmm. instead of that. That's why a lot of times when you eat, your body goes down instead of you getting energy, you get sleepy because the digestive system is trying to understand exactly what did I do with this stuff that I can't pronounce. Digestive you know? system, all confused. <laughs> all confused. <laughs> You know, you got this these names of these different chemicals and preservatives. And there's so much when you read those labels. Yes. It's like, what is you all know, this stuff? And then you and you look, say, okay, you know, well, where is the main ingredients that right. I'm supposed to have? You know, you don't have it. So when we talk about nutrient uh, dense food, mm -hmm. it's coming from nature, and uh, it's not over processed, right. so it can enter the body. It feeds the cell like it should to energize the cells so your, your body, organs and cells can work properly. And you're gonna find yourself, you know, not being uh, hungry. Mm -hmm. I was uh, sharing with somewhere, I am on day 27 of my intimate fasting. And I fast for 16 to 19 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I eat nothing. And within an eight hour period, you know, I, I'll eat when I'm hungry. And uh, when I eat, I try to eat high density mm. food. Mm -hmm. And I find myself now, because this is something that's supposed to have been seven days, I was supposed uh. to be doing this, and then I said, oh, I'll do it seven days, flush my system, because I was doing some things that I shouldn't be doing, eating some things, you know, having some wine and, and drinking, and you know, doing some things that I shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, this is time to flush the system. It's supposed to last for seven days it has actually last 20 days over for 20. Wow. Because my body says, mm -hmm. you know, I don't need, mm -hmm. you know, all of the stuff that I uh, put in. Because if I get the high uh, nutrient dense food, 
I eat less. Wow. Like right now, I haven't eaten since four o'clock yesterday. And I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not dying. Since four o'clock yesterday. Since four o'clock yesterday. <laughs> I'm not dying. I'm going to have something when I leave here. But I'm fine. Mm. I'm not, uh, I'm not hungry not yet. Starving, yeah. But I am empty. <laughs> wow. And so my, I felt like my I body like is doing, you know, repairing itself and, and doing what it should be doing. So I make sure when I do eat that it would be something that is very highly um, nutritious. Uh, I don't want anything um, that is over processed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is this is really amazing because, you know, as a person who's who's been in the healthcare field for over 35 years, we know a lot of the diseases now come from our, you know, the foods that we eat, because, you know, food can be medicine, mm -hmm. or it can almost kill you. <laughs> it your medicine or your poison. Yeah, or your poison. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. And a lot of the diseases, like mm -hmm. diabetes mm -hmm. and, and arthritis and all of that, comes from our immune systems, you know, responding to a lot of things we're putting in it, the environment and everything, toxins. That gut health. Gut health, yeah. You know, it's, it's like brain health. Gut yeah, health is brain it's, health. It, it, it is, and with uh, this whole COVID mm -hmm. uh, age that we're living in, uh, we really see how important the immune system is. Oh, yeah. And our immune system, you know, is, is, is pushed and forced mm -hmm. by the food that we put in it. Yeah, it is. You know? Um, so a lot of times we are destroying um, our, our gut because mm -hmm. a lot of people are not empty mm -hmm. you know we're not storehouses mm -hmm. and we are storing a lot of chemicals and preservatives and food that does not digest well because it's already over processed but so it's not feeding you know our cells and our organs and our brain the way that it should so that the brain can communicate you know mm -hmm. with the gut mm -hmm. So for someone who is just starting this journey and, you know, can see the benefits of, of becoming vegan and, you know, sort of early on in life, what would you say to them? I mean, because it's hard. That's a difficult it's, it's transition. A, it's a very difficult transition. Uh, I tell people, don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. But one of the things is just start slow. Mm -hmm. Just eliminate one thing. Mm -hmm and say, okay, I eliminate this and how, I feel, how do I feel? Mm -hmm. Anything that you think might be your problem, uh, kind of eliminate that for mm -hmm. a while and then see how the, the body uh, react. Mm -hmm. um, I did because when, when I was going through uh, the Dr. Savy uh, Nutritional Guide, I messed up, mm -hmm. you know? I felt, you know, fell off the wagon, mm -hmm. but I get myself up and I get back. And then I start to feel uh, different um, I start to feel better mm -hmm. and then I start to look at this stuff. I don't want that because it makes me feel like uh, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I you know, my body starts to communicate with, with me. A lot of us can't, you know, when we start, it's a lot of noise and, and we can't hear the body communicating because wow. when we're doing things like eating a lot of dairy or whatever, everybody got a pill for you. To mm -hmm. keep on eating. That's the thing. <laughs> you know? I'll just go to the doctor and I'll take medicine for that. Yeah, I'll take a medicine for yeah. that. Okay, I'm allergic to uh, dairy. And so I can go over here and take this pill. Mm -hmm. So I won't be, and I, you know, but your body's saying, I don't want it. But I'm going to give you this pill that it don't want either. Mm -hmm. So that you can just quiet down and you can let me eat whatever it is that I, I eat. A lot of people do not know that 75% of African Americans are lactose intolerant. Mm. That's why your, you know, it, the children, and you know, I was seeing uh, kids mm. when I was working with children, you know, all of the allergies, the, the epipens, the mm. runny nose, the, all of these things uh, going on because nobody sat down, mm. and it's research mm -hmm. to back this up, mm -hmm. you know, as well, but nobody is, telling us these things. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that we are going to have to uh, listen to our bodies. And, and when the body say, I don't want it, we're going to have to find a way to cut it off and say, you're not my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me get some new friends, <laughs> you know, by getting some new food. Yeah. And so I just tell anybody who's trying to start out, just take, you know, it's one day at a time. Yeah. You know, one day and at a time. one day at a time, if you 
mess up, start over. Mm -hmm. But you, your body will love you. Mm -hmm. you and when you start this. feeling better, you know, yes. that right there would sort of be validation that, you know, right. that this is for you. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I hadn't always, I was overweight, bad skin, arthritis. Now I'm walking five miles a day, uh, wow. uh, Tuesday through uh, Fridays and every Monday because I don't have to go into the kitchen. Uh, I walk 10 miles. Huh. 10 miles. Wow. I walk. This is a, it's a girl who had problems with her knees. And someone that I have been doing this only eating once a day. That right there. But is, I'm eating right. It's is <laughs> just, I mean, you know, you're living proof that it works. It, it, works. it really works. It does. Thank you so much, Jackie. Dr. Jackie, now, if someone wanted to reach you and follow up with you or mm -hmm. you had questions, how could they, what's the best way to reach you? Well, Beyond Vegan Cell Food, uh, we're located at 615 High Street in Portsmouth, Virginia. And our phone number is 757-606-1307. And we're open from Tuesday through Saturdays from 11 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And you're welcome to call. And you're just speaking. I know I've, I've seen you do <laughs> demonstrations and yes. things like that. So yes. like if a church group wanted to contact you. Just, just give me a call mm -hmm. and, um, and I will try to work with it. It's all about community uh, for me and trying to help people and understanding my purpose. And I feel like this is my purpose is to... Um, you know, use myself mm -hmm. as a living documentation mm -hmm. that uh, we are what we eat mm -hmm. and how important it is to, for us to uh, eat, not to live. I mean, not, not, eat, not live to eat, but eat to live. That is, that is So excellent. we have to make sure that we do that. Well, you're not just you know, it's not just your passion, it's your purpose for yes. you, because I can feel that when I'm talking to you about <laughs> it, the excitement there, yes. but you know this is your calling. Yes. Right. I, I, I really feel it, and I'm, I have embraced it, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> and people are learning from you. Thank you so much thank, for being on the thanks show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in to For the Common Good with Juanita. We'll see you next time. Thank you.